would like to get some of the questions that you guys are bringing to each table. Bueno, lo que queremos hacer es escuchar esas preguntas que están surgiendo de sus mesas. Y quizás hay preguntas que ustedes tienen, que los demás tienen y que podemos contestar. Y que esas preguntas tal vez pueden ser de beneficio para todo el grupo. Por ejemplo, ahorita escuchamos una, una pregunta. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre una facultad y un centro? ¿Quién de entre nosotros no entiende muy bien la diferencia? ¿Quién, alguien, alguien más? Entonces, Brad, ¿nos puedes explicar la diferencia? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre una facultad y un centro? Una facultad tiene un rango de, de cursos diferentes. Por ejemplo, la facultad de ministerios cristianos tiene eh, evangelismo, entre otros. Entonces ofrece ese rango y diferentes maneras de estudiarlo de entre, de, debajo de esa facultad. Un centro tiene un, es mucho más enfocado. Por ejemplo, el centro de recursos familiares. El propósito es promover el entendimiento, todo entendimiento acerca de la familia. Y hacer eso crecer en el reino de Dios eh, dentro de las esferas. Entonces, ese centro va a servir a todas las facultades en todo lo que, tiene, lo, todo lo que viene alrededor de la familia. Y un centro puede tener un curso en eh, distintos niveles y tal vez un eh, título y otros seminarios. Es mucho más enfocado que una facultad. Una forma que yo me, me gusta explicármelo a mí mismo es que una facultad da un entendimiento vertical como para profundizar mientras que un centro tiene una experiencia de aprendizaje más horizontal entonces en el vertical vas a profundizar en la facultad vas a profundizar en tu conocimiento y en el centro vas a aprender algo que se puede aplicar en cada facultad eso lo llamamos eh, interdisciplinaria se puede ser aplicado a, a distintas facultades ¿eso les ayuda a entender un poquito? no, sí ¿Cuál, eh, ¿cuáles otras preguntas tienen ustedes? Hay un micrófono que, que anda por ahí. Que hay una pregunta que viene al lado izquierdo. When is it appropriate to register an instance before, during, or after a school? When is it appropriate to register the instance of a school before? During or after. ¿Cuándo es el mejor tiempo, el tiempo más apropiado para registrar un curso? ¿Antes, durante o después de que se acaba? Tal vez alguien de, que registra puede contestarnos esa pregunta mejor. Miriam o Mandy. Is 
after a school instance? Before, during, or after? The best time to register an instance, to create an instance, El mejor tiempo para registrar un curso. is as soon as you have the dates for that instance. If you already know that January of 2019, you're going to have a, a, a DTS. Create the instance in the app. So that that, ad, that uh, school will show up on the ULOFN website. If at any time the dates change a little bit or the course leader changes, all you have to do is go back to the app, click on the school, and edit the information. But if you want to take advantage of free advertisement, you have to create as soon as you know it. Does that help? Yes? What other questions we have? We've got one here on the stage. What is the correct process to grade a DTS student? It's good you don't even have to name people, they can come. Special. <laughs> the thing is, we have the outcomes for the DTS. And many of the, our DTS leaders, they never looked in the outcomes to grade their students. And because in their minds, a DTS student needs to be evaluating his character. And we need to grade everybody with the same. Everybody with the same measurement, with the same uh, framework. But it's not true. People arrive in different, uh, people come to our DTS and they are different. So we cannot grade everybody with the same measure. Another thing, I cannot grade my students just focusing in their character. Or in my one-on-one -on -one conversations. We need to have things that we can measure. So we can, we can evaluate their participation in the classroom. We can measure their academic work their ministry involvement. Se en el we can uh, invite them to do a self-evaluation. Eh, and we need to wor walk alongside with them in this process. Que a ellos en este and they need to, be, to have it really clear why we are inviting them to grow in some aspects in their personal life. So in my base, we have an evaluation that we, we do every two weeks. And my student is going to fulfill this evaluation. And who is walking with him is also going to fulfill the same evaluation. We are going to ask about punctuality. Relationship. 
How they are embracing what God's talking to them. How they are relating. How they are facing work duties. So every two weeks, we are going to sit together and we are going to talk about this evaluation. Sometimes the students, they are going to be more hard with them than I am. So I need to show grace to them. Sometimes they have a blind spot. So I need to challenge them to look that area in their lives. And we need to remind something. We don't have grades in the DTS. So one student, he can finish well. And he's going to get satisfactory. Or they have you. How can you say the you? Unsatisfactory. And this is the only grade we have in the DTS. You can create tools to help the students walk in their process. Podemos crear ferramentas para que estudantes andem nesse processo. Podemos crear ferramentas para guiá-los nesse processo. But we cannot grade them. Pero não los podemos dar nota, não los podemos calificar. As the as we do in the second level schools. Da mesma maneira que fazemos com as escolas secundárias. I ask Kalina to stay so I can check this comment with a DTS person. Three, three very important questions for DTS evaluation. Are they seeing and understanding where they need to grow? Are they making effort to grow? Se están para and is there some evidence of that growth si in the way they behave and relate to others? Say them again. Are they seeing where they need to grow and change? Are they making effort to grow? Se están esforzando para crecer. And is there some evidence of that change in the way they behave and relate to others? One thing that we need to have really clear in our minds Algo que que tener muy clara en is that we need to allow the students to measure these three things. In an objective way. Objective way. So they need to know when they do things that show that they need to grow. I cannot just think, oh, they need to grow about to relate with people that are different from them. Oh, I don't think they repent in their hearts. I don't think they are being they are engaging in the intercession. If I try to grade these things, I am being subjective. And I'm judging them with my own heart and my own understanding. I cannot do this. No puedo hacer eso. I cannot see someone's heart. No puedo ver el de otra so if they came to me, Entonces, si a mí, if they ask forgive me, for forgiveness, perdón, I need to believe in what they are saying to me. Tengo que creer lo que ellos están I cannot see today, I don't see repentance in your life. No puedo decirles, no veo en tu vida. 
And we need to be really careful about this. And we need to, to trust in the Holy Spirit in their lives. Because if today they are here, and tomorrow they are here, they are growing. And I need to approve them in their DTS. We need to remind it's just five months or six months. They are going to be in process after the TTS is over. I am in, the, in process 15 years after my DTS is finished. I'll just extend this a little bit into second level schools. With second level school, the first question we have to ask is what do we want to assess? And if we've defined the outcomes of our course, what we want students to be able to do and know and be at the end of the course, Those are the things we want to assess. So you develop your assessments to say, how do I know that they know this? So you might have an assessment that gets them to write something down or say something, but something that shows that they know what you need them to know. then how can I see that they can do this? So you, you create something that allows them to demonstrate either by practice or do, on, on outreach. And how can I see their attitudes? And you'll be observing the way those attitudes show themselves in their behaviors. And then the other thing with that is we do have to give grades A, B, C, D for post for second level schools. I can't go into this a lot right now. But we want those grades to actually mean something. means something about the quality of their readiness to go out and do the job. There are three articles in the reference guide about evaluation. So I, I encourage you to read those. And then if you have questions, talk to your college talk to people like myself and the other members of the Provost team and we can help you more. And I repeat that. I've, we, we go around YWAM bases and very often a school leader will come, approach us and we will ask What does a student need to do so I can fail him? I'm not making that up. What does a student need to do? What are the things that if he cross, I can fail him? And that's the wrong question. That's not what we are looking for. And I believe, friends, that to, to, approve, to, to approve someone that is not ready, it's not an act of love. To approve someone that is not ready, it's not an act of love. But uh, we are not looking out for ways to fail our students. 
we are looking for ways to make them move forward. So the question to ask is how can I help them to move a step forward? And I believe that no school leader is happy about failing their students. I mean, if you are happy by failing students, you should be doing something else. I don't know what, maybe an, immig an immigration officer, or, you know. I, I don't know. Something else. That's not our business. Our business is to help people to move forward, to help them in the best way and to assess them in the best way that we can as well. Where we are actually measuring knowledge that was received and applied, and not what it was not given or applied. So I, I can give one example on this. Uh, not that example, another example. <laughs> I led a school years ago where I had a student that he was really, really bad in his exams. On written exams, first we couldn't understand his handwriting. Secondly, it didn't make sense even the parts that we were able to decipher so he was getting 30 percent 25 percent 35 percent so I came together to, to chat with him and uh, to, to find out what was going on this was not a writing school or an outer school This was another YWAM school. So I got the same exam and uh, I asked him to answer me orally the same questions. And the same exam, the guy got 95%. Just because he was able to answer in a way that was easier for him to communicate. So we have to provide these ways that people that are visual or synesthetic or uh, auditory will be able to, to, to let, let us know that they are really keeping the knowledge that is being given. As school leaders, this is our responsibility. Anyone else want to add anything? Ale yes, Rebecca. I just think it's really important that students are actively involved in their own evaluation. And so what I normally do with a student is, is because we have 20% or so on character evaluation, about 20%. And so I often ask the student right at the beginning of the school, what, what character growth, what do you want to grow in? And so in other words, they're actually taking responsibility for that growth. It's because sometimes as school leaders, we don't walk with the students every single day. And what I mean by that is the 24-7. And sometimes things happen in a student's life that they might not share. And so for, for a reason or another, they don't participate in the classroom activity. So 
And so we might make a judgment call. Y tal vez nosotros en ese momento queremos tomar una, una decisión y, y juzgar. And so we really have to work hard at not making those kind of judgments. Y tenemos que entonces trabajar muy fuerte para, para no tomar esas, esos juicios. But during the time, you can ask them, how are you doing with the goals that you have set for growth? And so you're walking with them in this process. And so it's a really great tool sometimes for assessing character growth. Is that helpful? You have something to add? A couple of last technical comments. The U of N has a guideline that no more than 30% of the overall grade can be about personal growth or character in a school. In DTS, I think the limit is 25%. But sometimes we, uh, as approvers, get assessments that say things like this. Personal growth, 30%. Eh, 30%. 30%. Class participation, 20%. 20%. Staff interviews, 20%. We don't know what you're, what you're assessing in a staff interview. So we need a little bit more information about that. But class participation is often about character. Staff interviews may often be about growth or character. So to us, we, we look at that and we think, well, maybe that's 70% character. So please help us understand what you're doing in assessments Por favor, a qué es lo que están by writing them very clearly so we know what you're assessing as well as how. Para, eh, qué es lo que están and then we can help you with that if you need a little bit more help through the feedback process. Y Any other questions? Yes, right here, Manuel. Yeah, uh, my question is that when, when a base set up a training, a second level school, and uh, as a base we need to administrate the training program. No, we, as a base, we uh, administrate the program. Ah, y como base tenemos que administrar el programa. Uh, how can we create a, a very dynamic way to add the school leaders to this training uh, or bringing them from other Y1 bases? It's still the base have to administrate the school or that school leader come to the base and set up the training? Uh, okay, uh, cuando una base establece un programa, una escuela de segundo nivel, eh, ya sea por la, la misma base o otros, o, o viene un, un director de ese programa, ¿cómo puede la base administrar mejor esa, es, ese entrenamiento y apoyarse con otras bases o con otros líderes de escuelas que vengan y apoyen ese entrenamiento? Well, just to clarify your question, uh, you mean to... to Administrate in the sense of uh, inviting speakers or uh, school curriculum leaders. students. Para school 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 leaders. leaders. The records. Uh -huh. the records. Okay. How can we answer that? I could answer, but I'd like to hear another voice. So um, I was pioneering schools in different locations around the world. Yo en del mundo. 
And uh, I was the school leader. Yo fui el, eh, líder de la escuela. Partnering with local bases to run a, a new school on their base and hopefully pioneer it. Y estaba eh, trabajando con otros líderes, otras bases para poder pionerar una nueva escuela ahí. So there had to be an agreement between me as the school leader and the base leader and the leadership team of that base. Entonces tenía que haber un acuerdo entre eh, los líder, el líder de la escuela, los que administra, los otros líderes de la base y, y yo. So we could really be a team in developing these schools. Para que todos pudiéramos ser un equipo en desarrollar estas escuelas. So the way we did it was the, 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 perhaps the leadership on the base didn't really understand the, the very detailed uh, analysis of the school like I could as a school leader. So I would have to get the base login and, and register my course and all my weeks and invite my speakers. And then it would go to the base leader for approval on his base. After that, it would go to the college leadership and then to the provost office for approval. So it's a, it's a combination of me running the school on that base Entonces, es una de yo esa escuela, with the support of the, the, the base leadership con el de de esa base, with the hopes that that school would continue. De que esa continue. Merle, do you have something? Yeah, let me add one thing. Um, last, una cosa? last year, I worked with a base that had a base training director. El año pasado, yo trabajé con una base que tenía un director de entrenamiento en esa base. So he was responsible for everything that uh, Alec said. Entonces, él estaba en cargo de todo lo que mencionó Alec. Between the school leaders and what's going on on the base. Entre los, director, los directores de las escuelas y lo que estaba sucediendo en la base. So you might encourage your bases if you're large enough to have a central focus person who will coordinate that. The main point is that it's a partnership. And we don't want any school leader on a base operating in isolation from the rest of the base. It needs to be done together. Does that help, Manuel? Yeah. Other questions? Right here. We have a mic coming. Thank you so much. Okay, I have a question. Let's say that um, there's a student, I work in El Salvador, so let's say there's a student who's studying in the National University, but wants to take a semester off to do DTS. Bueno, digamos este ejemplo. Yo trabajo en El Salvador y hay un estudiante que está estudiando en la universidad, pero quiere tomar una pausa en su semestre para participar en una escuela con nosotros. Okay, so I actually have two questions. Bueno, tengo dos preguntas. So, the credits that they earn in University of the Nations, can they take them to their university? Entonces, los créditos que reciben en la Universidad de las Naciones, pueden ellos transferirlas a su universidad fuera de Dubu? And then also like the opposite side of the same thing. In, in my case, for example, I double majored in college in dance and communications. In my case, personally, I studied communications and dance. I studied communications and dance. So let's say that I would like to work with the School of Introduction to Communications and YWAM. Do I have to go back and be a student of that school to be able to help with it? Or how is YWAM equipped to handle previous experience? So there's uh, two questions, but two parts to the second question. <laughs> And the first part of that relates to the first question. <laughs> and that's basically about transferring credits between the U of N and other universities and vice versa. 
So the answer to that Entonces, la a esa is yes es sí. or no. Or no. <laughs> it depends on the circumstances, the school, everything. Every time there is transfer between any two universities. The university that you're applying to to gain credit will evaluate the credit of the courses you've already done and see how that relates to what exists in their university. And where it matches up, possibly transfer credits can be given. And where it doesn't, it can't. So it's always an individual case-by-case -case decision. But in terms of the possibility, Pero de la yes, the U of N does uh, recognize credit completed at other universities. And many times, students who have completed courses with the U of N have had that credit recognized in other universities. I just want to add something to the idea of tr about the question about transfer credits. <coughs> you have to understand that when you um, are looking to transfer credits, the first person that looks at that request is a bureaucrat. Okay. <laughs> And the first thing they're trained to do is say no. <laughs> They'll look at the University of the Nations and go, I don't understand that university. I don't understand modular education. No modular. Uh, you don't fit the same accreditation standards as we do. So many times they'll say no. Entonces, muchas veces van a decir no. We always tell our students, <coughs> a do not take no for an answer. No tomes no como una you, go, you get a letter of reference eh, busca una carta de from someone in the provost office. De de la de you send examples of the work you've done and you make a case for what you've done in the University of the Nations. Because what really counts is what you can do with what you have learned. We had a Latvian graduate. She got her bachelor's degree with the University of the Nations. She wrote an amazing thesis. Un tesis She wanted to go and get a master's degree in Europe. Ir a hacer su in Europe. Su en so she applied to a very good seminary in Europe. Entonces, ella fue y se re hizo a una, un bueno en They said no. Y le que no. We said go back. Tom wrote her a letter. Eh, Tom le una carta. I said, send them your thesis. Y yo le dije, Envía tu thesis. This is a true story. Esta es una When they got that letter and her thesis, ellos esa carta junto a su thesis they said, yes, we will accept you. Le dijimos, sí, te vamos a and we will give you a full scholarship. Te vamos a dar una beca and she finished that about a year ago. She's one of the first Latvians to have a master's degree in missiology. Es una de las 
Don't let another college steal your inheritance. No le permitas a otra universidad robar tu uh, and adding to the recognizing previous learning experience, we're very close to, to a break for coffee break, but I, I just want to take the chance to clarify something. Uh, we said earlier here that in order to lead a YOM training, our University of the Nations training, You have to do the training, then staff the training, then you can lead the training. Very, very recently, the University of the Nations has reviewed that. Very recently, the University of the Nations has reviewed that. And, and that is no longer a policy. And I explain you why. Who, who, how, how many of you were here for the conference last week? Did you all see Becky, the worship leader? Was she good in what she did? Now, she has never done a worship school, as we all learned through, during the conference. Does that mean that Becky cannot lead a worship school? Of course not. She can obviously lead because she knows how to. So the University of the Nations recognizes the gifting and the training and the ability that the individual will have. Perhaps the element that is missing for someone like Becky is the training on how to lead the school itself, how do academics, how do assessment. What is the dynamic of the school weekly, how the full learning, uh, the full learning week works for that particular program. And that, that can be acquired to, through mentoring, she, she can do a short, a short seminar with another school leader that can give her the information, the knowledge, the experience that she needs for that. Without she having to do, I will have to do a worship school, then I have to staff a worship school, then I will be able to lead a worship school. So that will bottleneck multiplication. Now imagine an SBS, a nine months SBS. How long will it take for the school to be multiplied? So, yes, we do first, then teach. This is the principle, right? This is the value behind. But the value is to recognize those who are actually doing, and then they can teach. So uh, then th we will recognize your skill and ability and previous learning. Perhaps it's just missing one key element, and it will help you to get that. In order to multiply our trainings in schools out there. I'll just finish that off a little bit, and then I'll go to Barbara as well. Talking with Tom about this, con Tom de esto, that do the school, staff the school, then you can lead, has never been an absolute. It's been an example and a guideline. Ha sido un y una, algo que nos guía. So, a very good one. Algo que nos ha muy bien. So just because someone has done a school and staffed a school, They should, not, they should not automatically be approved as a school leader. Decir que, eh, que sí 
And in all of this, again, it's about partnership. Y otra vez, todo esto se trata de ser partícipes, de trabajar a, en equipo. A base may see the quality of a person. Una base tal vez puede reconocer la calidad, que, la calidad de una persona. And want to recommend them to a, the college as a school leader. Y quieren recomendársela a la facultad como alguien que puede liderar una escuela. But that school leader may have some questions. That college may have some questions. Pero And so you need to work together to agree that this person is ready for school leadership. Was yours linked with this? My question is very short. Sure. Don't I have to let Rado answer? What are the requirements to enter into a master's program in the University of the Nations if you've graduated from another university? Although you've done YWAM schools, etc. ¿Cuáles son los requisitos para obtener una maestría dentro de la universidad, universidad de las Naciones si ya tienes un licenciado de otra universidad y tal vez has hecho otras escuelas secundarias dentro de la Universidad de las Naciones? Um, we want people to have <coughs> the uh, Bible, some kind of a Bible, um, Bible course or yes. And <coughs> so if they haven't had that, we would ask them to take the, the a three month Bible core with us. And then graduate studies right now in the University of the Nations is very much kind of it's it, we're doing a lot of piloting right now. Yeah. Exploring. What works best for us? Um, you know, we had master's degrees 20 years ago, and we stopped them because we didn't have the coursework for them. <coughs> We weren't really ready. No so we would kind of create one, say, oh, I do a directed study, you know, do this special thing, you know, and then, but it, it didn't, we didn't really have the coursework for it. But we are actually creating that coursework now. And so in some colleges you, ha you, you, you have an opportunity and other colleges they're not there yet. So it's very much a cutting edge kind of thing. Oh, you, they have to have the DTS. Yeah, yes, yeah. But thank you very much for the question. This is really a, a place of growth for us right now in the university. Uh, that we can offer graduate or level work. And, and we're making some very good progress. We've run out of time for questions. I do refer you back to that reference guide. Reading through that will help answer many questions. But you can always send questions to us and to others.